Hi, this is uh, Dr. Jeff Zeig, and I'm the founder and the director of the Milton H. Erickson Foundation. The Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference is the official meeting of the Milton Erickson Foundation. It's now being organized by HMP. We're very glad for that because HMP has the capacities to expand the scope and range of the meeting. We have a very distinguished faculty, and one of the faculty members is here with me right now, who is Michael Yapko. I'd like to introduce him to you, and uh, he can explain some things about himself and also some things about the Evolution Conference, because he's been a regular. We can also talk with him about the fact that he's a pre-conference faculty member. We'll say something about that in just a minute. So Michael, say something about your contributions. You have to earn your way to be on the faculty of this Evolution Conference, so let people know about what you've accomplished. This is a moment to brag. You're very generous, I appreciate that. I've spent my professional lifetime spending two things in depth. One is hypnosis and the use of specialized communication techniques to help people have a more multi-dimensional experience of therapy. And the second primary focus has been on treating the disorder of major depression. Now that depression has been declared the number one cause of suffering and disability in the world today, and it's a problem that's increasing, the need to have strategies for addressing depression effectively is, has never been greater. And so the opportunity to speak about what we can do about depression, what therapists can do to address it in treatment, and not only do treatment, but also address it preventively, I think is a very compelling topic that I hope therapists will enjoy and appreciate. So this is what you will be presenting in yeah. December 220. You're yeah. going to be talking about how to, can you help clinicians to be better capable of working with depression? Yes. You know, the, the days of therapists taking a back seat to medications is really over. We've come to understand that however valuable antidepressants might be, they're just not enough. It's not a, an effective enough sole treatment. The role of the therapist is a very well-defined one of how to facilitate this client being very active and learning specific skills in areas like coping and problem solving and relationships and the kinds of things that people need to be able to uh, address and, and master the complexities of modern life that are so overwhelming if you're not able to meet these things head on effectively. Michael, you're a pioneer in this field, but also hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Now, because the meeting attracts people from, it attracts professionals from all around the world, we have extra events. We have a pre-conference day, we have a post-conference day. And at the pre-conference day, I'm going to be showing clips from the Erickson Foundation mm -hmm. archives mm -hmm. of some of the experts who have graced the podium of the Evolution Conference. And we're going to discuss how to bring some of their methodology from the 20th century into the 21st century to dust it off and see what could be improved. You're going to be doing a pre-conference on hypnosis. Can you say something about that? Sure. You know, hypnosis is about experiential learning. You know, to be able to make therapy a much more uh, immediate and felt kind of an experience, a much more multifaceted experience. And there's something about the experience of hypnosis that amplifies whatever it is that you're trying to teach. So at, the, at the very simplest level, we know that people learn better when they're focused, when they're relaxed, and how much of anybody's therapy involves education. But also the fact that hypnosis creates this unique experience that is accomplished through dissociation, the ability to break global experiences into its component parts that allows for what's termed automaticity. The fact that these new ideas and new perspectives become reflexive. And even with something like depression, you know, many people are familiar with the idea of identifying and correcting negative automatic thoughts and the idea of using hypnosis to instill positive automatic thoughts has never really occurred to people. And to be able to do that uh, requires some skill in being able to facilitate hypnotic experience. And I intend to make that pre-conference day a very practical one where people will start to acquire some of the skills. Developing the skills takes a lifetime. 
but to be able to get enough skill to be able to go back to your practice and start to do something that brings a new element into your therapies, I think is a safe promise for people. And you want to promote generalization when you learn experiential techniques yes. from hypnosis. You can apply these in any form of psychotherapy to empower the message, to make the message more heartfelt, to make it come yes. alive for the yes. client. Well said. That's, that's what I mean when I talk about it being more experiential, that this is something that has the ability to cross boundaries, that as somebody learns something in one particular context, it's what many people call the ripple effect of how it spreads into other areas. And, and that's what empowers people. And of all the people in the world who most need help with empowerment, it's depression. You know, the, the people who feel the most disempowered the most hopeless and helpless. Super, and hypnosis, hypnosis is the mother of psychotherapy. Freud, Wolpe, Eric Byrne, I think even Fritz Perls, these people started with hypnosis yeah. and then diverged, built from hypnosis to establish their own. Yeah, it's a curious thing how many people don't know that and somehow think of hypnosis as separate and distinct from what they're doing. And I'm hoping to promote that exact perspective that when you're good at doing hypnosis, it's just part of a larger therapy anyway. It's a vehicle for introducing ideas and possibilities. Hypnotherapy does not necessarily require an inductive trance. But say something about what it's meant to you. What does it mean to you that you're on the faculty of the Evolution of Psychotherapy Conference? It's, uh, it's been a remarkable journey. I'm so grateful to you what you've done in creating this as the architect of the evolution meeting. You know, when, when you think back to the first one in 1985, you know, you've commented on this, how many people who were luminaries in the field had never met each other. And the fact that there wasn't that kind of cross-fertilization, everybody off doing their own thing, you've done an amazing thing of bringing all of these people together who are the the best in the field in many ways uh, that, that share ideas and share perspectives and it's stimulating and you, you manage to bring in thousands and thousands of people. The energy is electric. Uh, I think anybody who, who doesn't attend a meeting uh, of, the, of the evolution of psychotherapy meeting is missing something huge. And I really hope that everyone will see what you're offering and be inspired by it and recognize that you got to be there. We hope that we've added some impetus to the uh, convergence of yeah. the commonalities that make psychotherapy work. The first hundred years were divergent and developing different approaches right. and now we need to have some things come together. Yeah. And this has meant a lot to you personally. You it get has. to interact and you get to talk with people whose approach to psychotherapy are quite people different. People whose work I have admired that I've never had the chance to meet and here's this opportunity for me to connect with these people. So for me, it's, it is on so many different levels so meaningful. It is a huge honor for me to take my place amongst these people and I'm so- Well deserved honor. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that. And, and uh, the, the fact that all of these people are assembled in one place and the, the attitude is one of generosity you know that you can stop any one of these people in the hallway and engage them in a mini conversation get a question and people are so open about it and so receptive to that kind of connection and uh, you, you've created something that is remarkable and i just can't thank you enough for putting this together and making it possible and as i said i i, I hope people will recognize this is an extraordinary opportunity and take advantage of it and come well, come to evolutionofpsychotherapy.com, see the way in which the program is being organized, register early, it's your best opportunity to get a discount on the registration fee. It's also your best opportunity to get a discount on your hotel room rate. evolutionofpsychotherapy.com, you can meet me and Michael in December 2020 in Anaheim, California, and we look forward to seeing you there.